Okay folks, just finished church, I'm off to my home church now. Um, wow, what a blessing that was. That was such a blessing. That was such, oh I feel so much cheered up today with that message. Absolutely fantastic. Oh, just, not a flashy preacher or anything, you know, but, but just preaching the simple word of God, you know. It, you, there's nothing better, nothing better than, than the simple word of God, you know. Just checking it's okay. There's nothing better than the simple word of God. Uh, he preached on, um, oh, I'll tell you what, I just feel so much better now. I feel so much encouraged. That's the word of God for you folks. It, the word of God is just, oh, I just feel so blessed. So I just feel so tanked up, full of energy and, and hope and strength. Psalm 130, he, he preached on this. Out of the depths I cry to you, Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my cry for mercy. If you, Lord, kept a record of sins, Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, so that we can with reverence serve you. I wait for the Lord. My whole being waits. And in his word I put my hope. I wait for the Lord more than the watchmen wait for the morning. More than the watchmen wait for the morning. Israel put your hope in the Lord, for with the Lord is unfailing love, and with him is full redemption. He himself will redeem Israel from all their sins. And he preached on that, and oh man, it was just, it was just such an encouragement. And a couple of other scriptures which I'll read. Um, Psalm 147, and I'll, I'll just share what he said in a minute. Psalm 147. 47 verse 4 and 5 he telleth the number of the stars and he calleth them out by their names great is the Lord and a great power his understanding is infinite and then that beautiful passage I think it's on the back here Hebrews chapter 10 I just feel so blessed and uh, Hebrews 10 Verse 22, 25 says, Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. And let us consider one another, provoke one another to love and good works. Amen. Amen. I'm going to get up, get off and drive. I've got, I've got to go over to the south side of Manchester now to church. So it's going to be a bit bumpy, so I don't want you to fall over. So there we are. So yeah, so we're off to uh, north side of south side of Manchester. Oh, I just feel so much better, so much encouraged. You know, uh, you can't beat. You cannot beat. The simple preaching of the Word of God. I don't care what anyone says. The church can modernise as much as it wants, but you get a, a preacher that preaches the simplicity of the Word. And wow, it's just fantastic. Just feel so much encouraged. Just get out of here. There's two people apart at the back and at the front. So, <laughs> making it difficult. People are very warm there, very friendly, and uh, the worship's very simple, nothing flashy. Simple preaching, simple worship, sincere people, can't beat it really. Um, I'm off to my home church, and uh, they're the same, simple people, uh, simple words, simple worship, so can't beat it really. Well, let's get out of here. I think we can get out of here. <laughs> so, I think so we can get out of it this way, I think. So, yeah. Um,
first of all we we had a communion and uh, what a blessing communion is to, to remember the Lord and what he's done for us and it puts everything in perspective all our problems all our issues all our difficulties all the challenges that we face so we think about the Lord what he's done for us and communion has a very <coughs> special blessing upon it I think you know the Lord blesses communion and I was blessed by taking communion, remembering what the Lord had done for us. and So that was a real blessing, real uplift, real encouragement. Just And some of the songs that we sung, uh, Nothing But The Blood Of Jesus, you know, stirred my heart, just stirred my heart to faith. And I thought, yeah, yeah, hallelujah, that's it. Nothing But The Blood Of Jesus. When I start to think about the blood of Christ and what it's done for us, kind of puts all our problems into perspective, you know? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Some of those hymns was, was awesome, it just really lifted me. And then this guy got up from London who who's, was preaching and my kind of guy really, my kind of guy. Humble, gracious, man of God read the word, nothing flashy, not about himself, just thinking of God, that's the kind of preacher I like, really, really good. And he, and he was talking about things that sap our hope, you know, and he, and, he, and he had an illustration, he had a basin and he poured water in it, and he was saying that's like us, our, our hope gets sapped, what, what saps our hope? And he said a couple of interesting things, he said sin, and then he said, unconfessed sin and then he said um, pretense I thought that was a good one where we pr pretend to be something that we're not where we pretend to be stronger than we're not or we pretend and we, we, we pretend and hide away our real problems you know and I thought that was really good he said let's just be honest let's be honest that sometimes we feel weak Sometimes we don't feel as strong as we ought to. And then he told a story of, a, of an experiment on rats, which he said it wouldn't be politically correct. Uh, and the story is, the story is um, that they put these rats in, in water and let them swim for 15 minutes. They couldn't swim no longer than 15 minutes. Then they pulled them out, wiped them down, put the rat in the water, let them swim for 15 minutes, pull them out, wipe them down, put the rats in. They did this time and time again. And then they found that the rats could only swim 15 minutes and they did it loads of times. In, in the water, out the water, in the water, out the water, in the water, out the water, you know? But then they put the rats in but didn't get them out. Because the rats had learned that every 15 minutes they would get help, every 15 minutes they would get rescued, guess how long the rats swam when they didn't get rescued? Not 5 hours, not 15 hours, but 60 hours. And it was because they had hope, and he was saying if we lose hope, then we lose our energy, we lose our strength. And these rats had hope, so they were able to go from 15 minutes only in the water. Because they knew they had hope, they went on for 60 hours. He was saying we need hope in serving God, so how do we get hope? And that's where the scripture comes in. And he said, the way we get hope is to meditate on the character of God. And that really, really blessed me. The character of God. And uh, he was telling us, he was saying that there is a, um, there is a, uh, a kind of uh, scientific experiment to discover particle waves. And they've found these stars, and there's millions and billions of them, as they were going 
are looking for these particle waves. They found these like, I think the neutron stars. And within a 15 mile radius of a neutron star, it has the same amount of power as the sun. It's only 15 miles, which is the size of London. But it has the same power as the sun. And he said, that's the equivalent of the energy stored in a proton star, or a ne neutron star, sorry. It's the same energy of all the people of the world, which is 7 billion, were squeezed into that sugar cube. That's the amount of power in one of these neutron stars. And he, and he was saying, that's the God that we trust. That's the God that we, we believe in, that God made those stars. God knows those stars by name. And there are trillions of them. And it, and it put it in, in, in perspective for me. I just thought, wow. You know, whatever issues are in my life, whatever issues are in other people's lives, that is the greatness of God. And that's how much we can trust Him, you know. He's that big that awesome that we can trust him for everything and we might not understand things but we can trust him with that greatness that ma majesty that power we can trust him and, and it just really lifted me I thought wow you know we can leave it in God's hands God, God will be there for us he will help us you know and then he, he said, not only do we contemplate the nature of God in his like power, specifically, and his greatness, but also his love. And that really blew me away when he, when he um, gets really busy here, it's really busy. Just now, we're down near Piccadilly Station. He talks about the love of God, and he, and he quoted 1 John chapter 1, verse 7 and 9, If we confess our sin, He is faithful and just to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And that Christ does wash our sin away, and He does, He is there with us. And, and you know something, by meditating on these truths, you know, a lot of things in my mind just melted away. And God is great, and God can be trusted, and God knows best. And, and you know, say, so the, the questions that my brother's been asking about the doctrine of hell, you know, we can trust God on that issue. We can trust God on that issue. And if God says there's a hell, then you better believe it. If he says it, you better believe it. It's no good trying to water it down. It's no good trying to like water it down. God is God, and 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 if God says something in His Word, it's no point in watering it down. If you don't like it, you 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 you, you don't trust God. God is great, and God knows what He's doing. So who are you or me to question God? Do you know what I mean? Really, really busy here, folks. I've got to concentrate. Sorry about this. I'm just fo focusing to get out of this busy spot. It's near uh, Piccadilly, and I'm not very good at talking and driving, so I'm just going to be quiet for a second. I'll see if I can put Classic FM on. Bastard. The ID, you know, television was invented for David Attenborough's new series is absolutely incredible. I think it continues on uh, BBC television tonight. And a little warn about uh, my favourite digital channel, Freeview, which is Top Pictures. And uh, one of the wonderful films that you do, you do not see anywhere else. It's just classics and films that literally I've never seen before. And a, a huge, huge back catalogue. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. Including also... Just turn that off. Sorry about that. Just really busy around here, and I've just got to focus a, a second or two, folks. I don't know if 
and it wouldn't let me through. It's please let me through. I hope this taxi driver lets me through. So yeah, so on the doctrine of hell, you know, I've got no problems with it because at the end of the day, I trust God. And if God says something, something in His word, then that's it. And all, and and one of the things that my friend keeps saying about the doctrine of hell, it's not very clear. It's not very clear. Whenever a, a theologian or a pastor, I'm not saying my friend, but whenever a theologian or a pastor says it's not very clear in the word. Concerning a fundamental doctrine, you can bet your bottom dollar that they're going off into heresy. Because that's how heresies start when that kind of language is happening, you know? Whenever you hear a theologian or a pastor say it's not very clear in the Word of God, and it's a fundamental issue, fundamental doctrine, then they're on dodgy ground. And I, I, I can tell you that with authority, I've, I've spent eight years full-time in academic study and I've heard countless theologians and pastors in these seminaries in academic uh, scenarios where they always say on the fundamentals it's not very clear and you look under the bonnet of their theology and they're all over the place and heretical. Secondly, you know, if you're going to listen to rubbish theologians, you're going to get rubbish theology. And if you start undermining the doctrine of hell, you're listening to rubbish theologians. And you're just going to get rubbish theology. You want to read the good, solid, orthodox Christian writers on the topic. And so all these debates about the Hebrew word for Sheol or the Hebrew word for Ge uh, the Greek word for Gehenna, you know, if you're looking at the wrong sources, you're going to get you're going to get your head messed up. You need to be looking at the orthodox sources and and the good sources. Um, you know, that's on the doctrine of hell. On the issue of uh, working and serving God in Manchester on a Saturday, I got a I got a bit of a unkind text by somebody, I don't know who it was, but the text was um, something like, uh, concerning Saturday, oh well, you know, you do your own thing on a, on a Saturday, you go off and do street preaching, so you've got to practice what you preach. And I kind of thought to myself, Who's, who sent me this? Who sent me this text? Because I, I didn't know who sent it me, you know. But it was quite unkind, really. Um, to be honest, you know, I don't want to get involved in any controversies. You know what I mean? I just want to go on a Saturday, preach the word of God, and just have a few people there who want to support that preaching and table. You know what I mean? I don't want to be getting into any accusations or arguments with people. And and if anybody wants to do that then I'm not the man to be doing it with <laughs> you know I'd rather people just go away go and, go and argue with the telegraph pole go and argue with the, the phone box I don't want to be arguing you know I don't think it's right to be doing that on the streets so if anybody's got offended you know well I tried to warn people and I've given people plenty of slack. I've, I've let people do what they want year upon year. And I've not said anything. And a lot of things that have gone on are not good. And I've let it go, I've let it go. But the pastors at my local church, some of them that I had a chat with, and a lot of friends have said that I'm in perfect right to say, if you come to the table, this is the rules, these are the guidelines. And it's only fair. So it's not about criticising any individual or criticising people because if, I, if it was I would have named names and I didn't name names and I'm not going to name names. So it's up to people if you want to work with me on a Saturday and you want to 
work standing with the table and just getting the gospel out that you're not you, you want to work as a team member either as an associate you associate with me or you you want to be a team member you want to be part of Royal Blood Ministries or or you just want to associate with me it's only fair that I have some ground rules because if anything goes wrong at that table it's not you who gets in trouble it's me so it's only fair so anybody who takes offence anybody who gets upset anybody who wants to start some kind of big controversy or start forming camps and different groups you know then to me that's childish and I'm not into that I'm not it's not about my ego it's not about me wanting to be the top top man in Manchester doing evangelism it's nothing to do with that it's just about doing things decently and in order you know that's all it's about really it's just about doing things right so that so that when people come to the table uh, we're honoring the Lord by doing it in the in the best way that we can and if people want to be part of that they can join it does there's nobody not willing you know everybody's invited to join and to help but when you come for that hour or you might come for an hour or two hours or three hours or four hours it's not a, a gossiping shop or a, a, a place where you come just to chill out and talk to people fellow evangelists where you're just having a chat with fellow evangelists and, and hobnobbing and, and chatting away it's not no we're trying to do a work so when you come you work for that hour or three hours however long you come and support support each other as a team and there's a structure and there's some basic ground rules that's all you know and I've never been able to say that or do that because I've, I've never had the confidence to do it really I've never had the confidence to, to say there are ground rules I've always just let things slide but it's it stressed me out for a week and I, and I don't want to get stressed anymore I want things to be done right so so please you know don't anybody don't take offense it's not it's not to be any individual or whatever but I I, I have to put some principles down and then people either like their principles or not it's like any any organization any group anything and and so the person said well you go off and do your own thing well I do go off and do my own thing in terms of I go off to different cities and towns but when I go off and do things if I meet fellow evangelists we work as a team I work with them as a team and I, and I give them due respect so it's not completely doing my own thing it, it, it's doing my own thing with ground rules even when I go out you know and even when I go out there's certain standards you don't lose your temper that's one standard I don't lose my temper I don't butt in if anybody's having a conversation I don't butt in I don't preach when somebody else is preaching I kind of have an etiquette and treat people and other evangelists and ministries with respect, you know. So it's not doing my own thing in that sense. So those are my thoughts. So anyhow, I'm tremendously encouraged today. I was a bit discouraged this morning, but... I'm feeling um, a lot, lot better now, so, you know, God's good. Just being in the Word, being with God's people, praying, praising God. It's just nothing like it. I just feel so blessed, so encouraged. And, um, yeah, just being in the Word, it's amazing. So here we are. So, God bless you, folks.